This is Steve Carlson. These are a fourth set of the 50 or so interrogatories. That's all that's allowed by the law without uh, a motion uh, that are posed to Senator Al Franken, who is the contestee, along with Mark Ritchie, in the election contest trial scheduled in St. Paul for December 18th. Uh, which will be held prior to any election certificate being issued for him to the U.S. Senate. I believe as you listen to this short set of questions and think of what Senator Franken's answers would be, you will realize that these are gross irregularities and violations calling into question the validity and constitutionality of the November 4th vote for U.S. Senate in Minnesota, which was way out of sync with the rest of the nation. Now, I'm going to start by uh, one that I've added uh, to the caucus claim video as 23. Do you believe that disallowing voting based on race, sex, or other suspect classifications in the DFL caucuses and conventions violates any aspect of the U.S. or Minnesota Constitution? And I give First Amendment, 15th Amendment, 19th Amendment, Article 1, Section 4, the 14th Amendment, and Article 7, Elective Franchise of the Minnesota Constitution. And now for email claims. Uh, 24. Are you aware that Steve Carlson has been blocked by Secretary of State Mark Ritchie from receiving certain email, voter email addresses? Of registered voters his office has collected when voters register? 25. Do you believe that voter email addresses are public information under the state's Minnesota Government Data Practices Act? 26. Are you aware that Mark Ritchie admitted to the legislative auditor that he took home a significant number of voter email addresses in one of his previous campaigns for Secretary of State and used them to raise funds for his campaign and to get his message in front of the voters for his race. 27. Do you use email addresses collected by your Senate office? Do you believe these are public information? 28. Did you buy email addresses for your U.S. Senate campaign in 2014? 29. How many email addresses did you use in your 2014 campaign? 30. How much did you spend on reaching voters in your 2014 campaign? 31. Do you believe that email communication with the voters helps get your message in front of voters? Does this leverage TV appearances, paid or unpaid? Does this leverage your social media campaign? Do you believe the IP nominee Steve Carlson Senate campaign was hurt by not using emailings to the eligible voters in Minnesota in 2014? 33. Do you believe that disallowing Steve Carlson or anybody else uh, use of the voters' email collected when registering violates any aspect of the U.S. or Minnesota Constitution? And I give First Amendment, Article 1, Section 4 uh, of the Constitution, 14th Amendment, uh, Article 7, Elective Franchise of the Minnesota Constitution. Uh, I believe that these, uh, the answers to these questions will show that <clears throat> Senator Franken was very aware of the advantage that his campaign gained by the use of email addresses and that the First Amendment requires that his access to free emails uh, because of his incumbency uh, or because of the large amount of money that he has and which does leverage his TV and social media spending uh, made an impact and gave him a great advantage. He totally realized this and that uh, his partisan, Mark Ritchie, uh, blocking the, the use of this 
Well, he himself used the public information, uh, did uh, violate the Constitution, and did help to invalidate this uh, election. And so I, again, look forward to his act answers. I do look forward to the trial on the 18th. I want to continue to get develop this case and get the information from uh, Mark Ritchie and Al Franken. And I believe this should be uh, given to the United States Senate as they make the decision on whether or not to seat Mr. Franken and also uh, whether or not uh, this uh, election should be validated to the extent that, even to the extent that it uh, would decertify the Independence Party because these kinds of unconstitutional practices invalidate the election uh, to the degree that it decertifies the Independence Party because clearly uh, I could have got 5% if all of these things uh, were taken together. Also, I do assert that it would substantially impact the election numbers with Al Franken. Yes, he could lose. I would have beat him in debates. I would have beat him in the email messages, just like I beat him all over as far as on the issues. And I will debate him any place, anywhere, because I have better positions, better experience, better instincts and judgment to help to lead the Senate, lead the country in the Senate. And the, the partisan duopoly uh, plus the uh, failure to follow Minnesota election laws as established by the legislature have resulted in a skewed and invalid election and all of these claims are material. Uh, these actions are deliberate. Mr. Franken is very aware of the importance uh, of email and how these practices by his associates in the DFL party have uh, hurt uh, my campaign and unfairly helped his. And I will have more interrogatories. I hope that you will look at all of them because you begin to see exactly how this election was carried out so that it was really a not a non-election and he actually only got 25 percent of the eligible voters and he basically dampened the turnout so that it is at the lowest ebb in five election cycles and I think actually going back uh, further 